Oh, for sure. For sure. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone to the Mailbox Power Mastermind call. We do these every Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. our time, which is mountain time. Um, and this call is meant for you. This is, we learn from all of you also. It's not it's meant not to be a one-way call um, where we just train. We want to learn from each other because we all have unique talents and abilities. And I can tell you, Mike and I have learned so much from this group and we appreciate all of you, and for those of you who are brand new tonight on the call, welcome to the call. We're excited to have you and learn from you and you learn from us. So with that, we've kind of been talking about <clears throat> mindset and um, it's kind of been our core theme for a while now. And I just want to open it up and see if there are, before we get started, if there are any wins. I believe Lulu had a win this week, or it sounded like she was going to have a win. So if you have a win, raise your hand, um, use the reaction button, raise your hand so you pop up in my top left and um, I can see who to call on. Gail. She's muted. <laughs> okay, so I attend these um, networking events, and I went to one about two weeks ago, and one of my friends introduced me to this immediate medical care couple that um, run the show for three clinics, and long story short, uh, I invited them to our organization that I also go to, and they came there as guests, and then I had my appointment with them to show them the system, and <laughs> They're trying to decide, they're looking at the pro and the executive, and the one person says, oh, well, we need this for this. She said, oh, just do the executive. Let's just go. <laughs> and it was like, wham, bam, thank you. It was just like that fast. Awesome. And they were so much fun. They were hilarious, absolutely hilarious. And they also, not only do they run these three clinics, but they also are real estate Uh Realtor, real estate, realtors. Yeah, that's what they are. Um, anyway, so they were very excited. And I said, I can sit here and walk you through things. Oh, we got it. We know how we, we can figure this out. And they were on it like oh, awesome. <laughs> gave me a referral before I even left. And I said, Well, you want to take this? You can become an affiliate. Uh, we'll get to that. So so I have an appointment with him in about two weeks. So that was that was a big win. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Congratulations. Thank Woo! you. <laughs> awesome. Linda. Well, I had a couple of good, it was a good week. I had, um, well, first of all, I took, I took, had been thinking about Casey's call last Monday when he talked about the lead generation and I uh, finally got up my guts. I pulled myself a list. I agonized over what kind of a postcard I would send to these people. And I finally used Andrea's Last time I was on the call, she talked about the thing that Canva, where you can say, yep. give me three reasons why you should send postcards. Mm -hmm. I put it on a postcard, put that on a postcard with a kind of a sticky note thing and sent it out. Uh, in my area, it was window washers, 117 of them in the Seattle metro area. And I, I sent those out. Uh, I'm going for the um, low hanging fruit. Um, I'm talking about window washers, roof cleaners, gutter cleaners, landscapers. Those are that's who I want to talk to. In the meantime, a year ago, I joined a networking group. It was it was free. It was very casual. One of the guys in that group, and I didn't write any business in it. And I've been going every week for you know nobody wants to do anything. I one of the guys is a smart cremation guy. And he called up and said, I want to send, in your program, can I send postcards out to, you know, can I have a list of people already? Can I send postcards out? I said, you know, and yeah. And he, he took right on, jumped onto the uh, executive. I didn't have to make a postcard. He figured out how I was going to do it. Now we're making birthday cards. And not only that, I mean, he sends 100 birthday cards 
or thank you cards, not birthday cards, <laughs> thank you cards every month because he's a sales manager for a whole big area. Two other people <laughs> that he's referred me to are signing up at the end of the week. Awesome. That's fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's, that's good awesome. News. And, you know, Linda, you said something and Marie brought this up. She's not on the call tonight, but she brought it up a month or so ago, probably longer than that. And um, one thing you said about and even uh, Gail said this, they're just up and running. They figured it out. And what Marie said in the presentation when they asked her what's included in the 199, and she said, the system. <laughs> sort yep. of like if you go to Amazon and you pay for Amazon Prime, what do you get with Amazon Prime? You get the system. Yes, there are some benefits to it, but you don't get anybody that calls and helps you and trains you on the system if you want that it could be, if you choose to, um, be an additional stream of income for you. Um, that you say, I give so much for my customers and beyond that, my rate is X, either dollars per hour or per project. Or So I love that there's a theme lately that people are getting it and not having to do feel like they have to do a lot of work. I know Lulu's shaking her head. Lulu finally figured that one out. And, well, and I think um, it, I think that is I think that is mindset as well. Yes. I I think it is that's exactly what it is. I'm expecting that they will you know usually I would say, well, here, I'll do this and I'll do that and I No, I don't go there now. If they need to have me do it, fine. But if they, you know, they, it's not, I figured it out for crying out loud. They ought to be able to figure it out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, you know, we had that, that I had that feeling like, oh, I, you know, I have to help them. I have to be there and available and no. Just be Otherwise they won't do it. I will think, I feel like I'm apologizing. I don't need to apologize. It's not yeah. that hard. It really truly is be, being on these calls and learning the mindset has been huge for me. And, you know, like I'm trying to figure out Canva. People love it. I struggle, but there's nobody to call. There's no chat button or anything. Like I just have to figure it out. So I'm with at you. Least, there's, at least there's no good, this. there's no good YouTube video on Canva either. Maybe we yeah. ought to, I'd, I'd like I to was, talk to somebody who really knows how to use Canva for God's sake. I mean, I was going to say, if you would like us to, uh, dedicate a call or a couple of calls to that. Mike and I, I wouldn't call us experts, but we know our way around Canva pretty well. So we could do a training on that. I would love like it. it. Oh, but, me too. You know, at, at least with Mailbox Power, there's videos, there's a chat button. They, you know, if they're on the executive plan, they've got dedicated concierge service. I mean, there's a lot more than a lot of other platforms uh, will give you. Like sometimes you have to send an email and it could be days before they answer you. So yep. it's really about shifting the mindset and realizing that we really do offer them a lot of help. We just have to show them where it is and set the expectation that that's what they're going to do. Yep. Nanette. <laughs> well, two small wins. Um, the defense contractor that I've been working with has finally established monthly um, automations to send out his birthday cards and gift cards. I'm not winning that battle. Um, <clears throat> so the cool thing is I they're sending out 24 birthday cards and gift cards and I make zero, zero, right? Okay, I'm gonna make $2 total. Anyway, so that continues to roll. The reason they're doing it monthly in a single shot as opposed to dripping is because getting 24 invoices for $25 is driving their HR, or I'm sorry, their financial guys crazy. So they wanted a single invoice per month. So food for thought as you deal with large companies. So um, 
<clears throat> getting a single invoice if they set their mailer meter to higher, they won't get an invoice until it reaches the mailer meter limit. And then it would be $100 or whatever for the mailer meter plus if it was short. So um, it would only hit their credit card and they can download the invoices and I can show you they just need to be educated, Nanette, on the easy way to keep track of the finances. Right, right. Um, we'll talk about that later then. Yep. So okay. FYI, because I want everybody to know this, in the system, if you go to your wallet, <clears throat> uh, let me, yeah, let me just share the screen. Let me make sure I've got the account up first. Yep. Okay. So Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, you should all be able to see our screen. Over here you can see our account balance is $3.09 and we are set for $100 to reload. Do you see that? Right. Yes. Right here is credits. This is every time there are credits in the account. And here are the debits. And you can come down to the bottom and get an Excel spreadsheet on any of those. So credits, this is when money gets added. Debits is when stuff goes out. And that's how you can balance. That's how I show mortgage people and financial people. That's how you can balance the credits and debits. You take and do a total for each and you should see the difference in your wallet. Does that help? That does. That does. I awesome. will check I will check my with my point in contact and see if maybe that would meet their mail on their requirements better. Awesome. So one other thing that happened today, I have, I hate the dentist, just so you know, and I finally got a dentist and I survived. Now, mind you, I've been putting this off for years and I survived. And this has been about a year and a half, two years ago. And I sent the dentist a mug that said best dentist ever. And then Dr. Nichols name on it with brownies and the whole deal because I was trying to really start the conversation. So throughout the last year and a half, we've been dripping, you know, I'll send him something or I'll talk to him about it when my mouth isn't full of tools, you know? And this morning I went into, I'm getting a tooth implant done. And so there was no really work done. It was more of an x-ray. And I had pre-printed some of the postcards that are in mailbox power that have to do about dental and their, six month checkup and I handed him four different ideas and I said, I want to know, no, I said, you need to know what your recall rate, your success rate is on your six month checkups. I said, I don't need to know. I said, you need to know what that is. And he went, and I kind of got the feeling from the facial expression that he didn't know. But I do know that 300 plus of his clients are from the VA. So they're getting paid for those six month appointments. So there's no problem with the insurance part. And I think it, the light bulb finally went on on his head. So I see him in another week or so, we'll follow up again, but maybe, maybe, maybe. So awesome. But we had a conversation. Awesome. Josh. Sorry, had we are we were we still on wins and stuff? Because just yep. a couple of things have been said that kind of were tangent to that that I wanted to bring up in terms of mindset and things. So sure, we're go not ahead. Done with wins yet? Or, go ahead. You said I. Go ahead. Wins. Sorry. Okay. So a couple of things for mindset. One of them is of course the mindset of of those of us who who are affiliates. But I'm trying to get my television volume turned down while I'm doing this here, so it's not bothering me. So, it, but another thing is the mindset, and I don't remember. Uh, if it was, uh, maybe it was Lulu, you were talking about somebody was following up on 
the, the mindset thing, but the mindset of the customer of the user, uh, cause I was working with, um, a client that I, that I tag team with, with, um, with Brian on, and I helped her create a really cool card. Uh, she's got uh, with a network marketing company and she wanted to send out, um, a bunch of cards to her, uh, as a touch for the end of the month to, you know, there's this campaign, there's this special it's ending. And so there was the holiday and other things kind of got towards the end of the month. And I said, well, you know, we're getting really close to the end of the month. I, I want to make sure we get this out for you. Cause she's paying us a consulting fee. That's why. So we're helping manage it, which is a separate thing, but expectations on shipping is where I'm getting to. Um, Folks think if it goes out, it's going to take, you know, well, that thing took one or two days. I appreciate that. Having said that, that may have been a package that was priority mail or otherwise, you know, and however many cards, 100 cards or whatever. Well, they haven't. Nobody's gotten their cards yet. I wish I could control the post office. Uh, but I think making sure that that comes in the conversation in terms of timing, sending way in advance, the post office is still, you know, still having some challenges. So we need to factor that in, or you need to factor that in when you're sending things to kind of uh, under promise and over deliver on the yep. post office that we can't control mm -hmm. um, is, is a big one. Yeah, I, I get that a lot. And I do let people know that once it's in the post office's hands, we don't have any control. And if somebody's having an event I recommend at least six weeks prior to the event that something goes out because it can take two weeks at times. And if you're doing a postcard, it can take three weeks for the postcard to arrive. So depending on the type of mail they are sending um, depends on what I recommend. But people are usually like, wow, I need to send it that early. And I would rather have something arrive early than to arrive late. So I would much rather tell somebody about an event, a class. Um, I would rather have a holiday card show up a week early than to have it show up a week late. That being said, as long as it's not an event that they have to register for, free event or not, as long as it's not an event, it doesn't matter if it's late. It's okay. I've had a lot of people say, oh, but, you know, it's, we'll say for St. Patty's Day is the 17th of March. And they get to the 10th of March and they're like, oh, it's it's too late because of mail. A St. Patty's Day, a birthday, things like that are never too late. The only time it's too late is when there's a date on it, a coupon date or a um a promo expiration promo expiration or there's an event and i would much rather have it be early because then people can plan for the event if you wait too late there might already be something on their calendar nanette the other thing too is about postcards even though we are paying for first class mail on postcards they are not handled like first class mail. And they are put in a pile until the post office has time to sort them and deal with them. So it's kind of like magazines, but yep. it's, they're not going out first class and we're lucky if they are received it in 10 days, we're lucky. Yep, and it's, it's not that it's not sent out first class. We've had this discussion on this call before. And I want to ask you, without putting it on the post office, if somebody pays you $100 and another client pays you $5, who are you going to pay attention to and get it done first? It, it's, a, it's a matter of money. Packages, they get the most amount for. They're the first thing that gets delivered. An envelope, which is kind of like a package, but like a hard envelope. That's the second thing. The third thing is going to be a first class letter. And the last is going to be postcards. And beyond that, it's bulk mail. So keep that in mind when you are educating your customers. It's not that it's not treated like first class mail. 
It's just that they get paid less on it, so they're not going to pay attention to it as much as they are. They need to deliver those things, especially that are guaranteed within a certain time frame. They've got to get those delivered or uh, they refund the customer the money. So it's just a priority. That's all. And you got to remember that. <clears throat> Bob. Someday. There, there we are. go. Uh, just a reminder that the, the medium sized postcards are first class posting. Yes. It says right on here pre sorted first class. So uh, I've discovered that uh, these, if you want them delivered promptly, uh, they need to they need to be the, the medium size, and then the post office does treat those with respect. It, the, the, Bob, the small, so much. Nope, the four by six are also first class mail. It's again the cost. They make more on a medium sized postcard than they do on a four by six. It is first class mail even on the four by six postcard. Okay. Yep. It's strictly, I want, I want you to be a business owner and tell me who you're going to pay attention to or what you're going to pay attention to first. And it's the one that's paying you more money. So keep that in mind. So let's go back to mindset. Oh, Tina, did you have something? I saw her hand. She's muted. There well, you go. <laughs> Uh, I just want to go back to for something you said. This has nothing to do with mindset, but it has to do with Canva. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, I was designing some T-shirts for my business. And instead of going to Canva, we went to another site. And I think it was called like 123RF. Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of images that we liked better than from Canva. So that's just an FYI. Yeah, it just depends on what you're looking for. Canva has a lot of images in Canva and a lot of times you can find what you're looking for, but you can also, if you're looking for postcards for real estate or insurance, there are lots of things out there like Fiverr that you can go pay somebody to design them for you, or you can go on Etsy and search and a lot of those templates are Canva templates. So once you get them, you can then edit them as you as need be. We've done that before. Instead of taking the time to design it, pay a little bit of money and let somebody else who's already designed it and works in that field, they know the, the industry better than you do. Let them design it and um, share those with your customers. You know, those, those sites, make them pay the Etsy fee or whatever, but it's a way for them, if they don't find something in Mailbox Power that works, that they can easily get stuff done quickly um, so that they can implement the system. Linda. This isn't about mindset either, but I'm just wondering and have been wondering, do you think, and maybe you have some power in that, um, it would be really helpful for the affiliates to be able to have uh, postcards or have some templates for when we are reaching out to businesses, not not that say mailbox power, that say, you know, that talk about, um, like in my case, window washers or um, not that I see that they have some for window washers, they can go and use those. But I'd like something that shows what an affiliate could use to approach a window washer or a, or a business a, a tradesman business, for example. Yep. Um, does that make sense? It does. Um, I would put those type of suggestions in the chat, Linda. Um, the more affiliates put those type of things in the chat, the more likely it is that we will get designs for that. I know that they are, they've said even on the Monday and the Wednesday calls, or I guess the Wednesday calls, that they are working on, they have designers um, in-house now or contracted that are working on designs for different industries and working on designs for affiliates to be able to promote the business. But again, if you have certain industries that you would like designs for, please put that in the chat. They really, really, really do pay attention to the chat. 
every time, but here's what I suggest. In front of your chat, start it out with suggestion colon so gotcha. that they don't see it as a complaint. They know you are providing a suggestion for a future enhancement. So you set the tone for the customer support person on the other end that you're not asking, where is it today? You're saying, I know it's not there, but I would like it in the future. Yeah, it would be helpful. It would yeah. be helpful. All yeah, right. perfect. So let's go back to mindset. Um because I really, and I know Lulu has figured this out recently, mindset is everything. And as Mike and I have said, until we figured that out, we weren't, that was a stumbling block for us. And once we got the mindset, it's not perfect. Nobody's mindset is perfect. We still have a lot to learn <laughs> and, and to get right. But once that shifted, it made all the difference in the world in our business. The way we thought about the cost of the different memberships, because I hear a lot of people, maybe, I'm not necessarily calling out people on this call, but I see it in the Facebook groups. I see it, you know, I hear it on some of the calls where they're like, one ninety nine is too much. It's too high. Businesses can't afford it. If you have that mindset, you are never going to sign up an executive. One ninety nine yep. is pennies. If a business is serious about marketing their business and retaining their customers, if you get in front of the right clients, they're like. It's only $199. And once you can make that shift on money, we heard a lot when the $49 went away and it became $79. And when the $149 promotion went away and it's now $199, there was a lot of disgruntled affiliates and customers saying, you know, complaining about it. We are still an extremely affordable, low-cost marketing tool, but highly effective marketing tool for those prices. Most and definitely. Un until you can wrap your head around that and be okay with those prices yourself, you're going to struggle talking to customers about it. The other thing, too, is if you're talking to <clears throat> the right customer, like Brenda said, $199, they're not going to even blink at. Uh, and if you're getting a lot of pushback for $199, then you're not in front of the right customer. I think so, that's, that's the other mindset shift that you have to be able to make is understanding that uh, a lot of businesses, just like individuals, have a scarcity mindset. And they are always looking for a deal. You know, uh, if you're if you get companies or, or business people that are looking for deals, they're probably not your ideal customer to start with. So just kind of keep that in mind. And like Brenda said, if you if you think that one hundred ninety nine dollars is too much for what you offer, you have to get past that yourself before you can be successful selling it to someone else. To be honest with you, I think we have the best platform in the business at the right, at, I, I still think it might be too cheap. Uh, $199 for most businesses is really just a drop in the bucket. And they get a lot of benefit from what we have to offer in the, uh, in the system. When you look at the marketing piece uh, and you look at the ability to nurture your database, I mean, we're giving businesses an ability to be seen and heard with the marketing piece. That's the only way they're going to be able to get their names out there and be seen and heard. Uh, that's one thing that we didn't have uh, in a previous company. Uh, and they they do a great job with the second part of it, but they, we just never had the proper uh, tool for, to market to uh, 
to customers or potential customers. And when you add, factor in the uh, list builder, wow, I mean, that's a game changer in itself. So I think really your mindset has to grow. It has to get bigger. And the bigger the mindset, the bigger your, your business is going to grow. And I want you to think about something. When you get something for free, how much do you value it versus if you had to pay for it? Um, I think it was probably about six weeks ago, we were talking about a Russell Brunson book that we were reading and he used to give a lot of things away free and he'd watch people go to the trainings that were given away for free and other people sitting in the room that paid thousands of dollars and the person that paid nothing really got nothing out of it because they didn't have any skin in the game to implement it. Think about that. If if there's pain in paying that $199 a month, if there's skin in the game, they're like, oh yeah, that just hit my account again. I need to go use it versus think about 49. How much of us 40 men can be a lot for some people, but for the most part, 49, it can hit four or five, six months. It's like, oh yeah, I should cancel that. Oh yeah. But the higher that price is, the more likely they are to reach out and get help and implement it. Now, it could work the opposite way and they see that and they're not using it and they cancel, but that's okay. They're not our ideal client. If they're not using it, let's go out and find the right clients and not stress over the ones that were losing unless it was because they didn't have weren't pointed in the right direction for the tools to learn the system. Gail. Yes, talking about mindset, it's there's also another part of the mindset is I shifted and wanted to go for bigger companies. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I made that shift, that's who I'm attracting. And so I watched these two look at that. I didn't have to give them the idea that they should do annual or anything. They just, oh, let's do the annual. Let's just do this. I left them filling out the application while I went to the restroom. Most of the time, I'm there walking them through and where they get stuck on the wallet. They'd already filled that out. And we're breezing right on through. And it's like, those are the people I'm looking for. So yep. that's a big part of your mindset. Who do you want to bring in to your world? of showing them mailbox power because not everybody. Yep. Yep. Me anyway anymore. Yep. Lulu. Yeah, because I don't think you can see my hand up here. It's just... Yeah, I can. It's right <laughs> above. It's hard to see, but yes, I see it. <laughs> well, so I so Andrea showed us, I don't know, a month or so ago that Magic Right in Canva. So I went into Magic Right and I said, um, write the potential customer questionnaire questions to ask a potential customer or whatever. I forget what it, anyway. Num first thing is, what is the primary purpose of your mailbox marketing campaign? Second is, do you have a budget for this project? Mm -hmm. That tells me everything I need to know. If they're like, I don't know, you know, that tells me, okay, I might be able to get them to see the light, but I don't have to like spin my wheels wasting time with people who have no clue. Yep. And that is gold for me. Yep. Yeah. It tells me who's who's serious, who I've got a shot with of, of really showing them and helping them. Yeah. If you have somebody that's looking at it and the some language they're like oh 199 it's only 199 and then you start talking to them they're like but I thought that was included in the 199 no the 199 is a system if they don't have a budget outside of the 199 yeah you've got to at least pay postage if nothing else and it's funny because I ask them that question now I'm not telling them what our prices are. They're telling me what they can afford, exactly. what they've got in their mind. And and it, it it's most of the time, it's more, way more than what it's gonna cost them. Yep. So I don't I, I don't even think about the 49 and the 149. I haven't thought about that in a while. Good. <laughs> because it just is what it is, and we just have to make it 
you know, our business to find those people that see it. Yep, yep. exactly. Linda. Well, and along with that, I would say I've taken to, um, because I, you know, 199, you know, you think, think oh my God. Um, I've taken to showing, I'm taking this, I've taken to saying nothing. I bring up the, the pricing and then I say nothing. These are the accounts. And because I, before I was saying, well, and you, I would explain what I found. And I, not that I have, you know, I have like five or six executives, not like I have a whole gob of executives, but I, what I've noticed is the ones that do, I was assuming that the pro account was going to be the right thing for them. They were choosing the executive. And I learned the best thing for me is to just have it be there for a little while and mm -hmm. see what, what their reaction is. And my, I was, I was stepping on it with my own mindset and um, that's been, that's worked uh, very well. I was surprised when the guy said, well, oh, I want this, you know, and that was the first time and I thought, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, I guess well, it was a lesson learned. Be quiet. I love that phrase, stepping on it with my mindset. Yep, I, I <laughs> do that. too, because it reminds me, Linda, of one of the first executives we signed up. And when it was first offered and this person hadn't used the account much at all. And when it came out, she wanted to meet with me and I went over and she said, I went over the benefits, just went down the list and said, this is what you get as an executive. And she said, oh, I definitely want the executive because I want the bell. And like, I'm looking at, she really hasn't sent much out, but she wanted the personal assistance of the bell to be able to schedule as many one-on-ones with the corporate staff as she oh, what is it? Wants so, the bell. <laughs> yes. So don't assume it's, a, that's a great, a great, uh, Yeah. I can't even say it. You know what? <laughs> mindset. Thank you. <laughs> Josh. I don't want to try and get blood from a turnip here. And we're kind of, I don't want to circle back too much, but I think just to, for, for everyone here who, who may want to build their own mindset, you know, take a walk to the Hallmark store or Walmart or Target <laughs> and go to the greeting card section and pick it up and look at the back and see what the price is. Yep. Then figure out how long it's going to take you to go to wherever the post office is, or if you have stamps at home or whatever, and then you've got to put it in the mailbox and do all those things. Then go look at the price, the full price of a card on our platform. It's $2.99. Then look at $1.99 for the cost of an executive membership and figure out how many of those $2.99 cards that will pay for. And then it, 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 again, we're circling and, you know, blood from whatever we want to say, but the value really is there. I think getting, getting ourselves to believe and, uh, and synthesize that, however that needs to happen is what's really important because then the customer will, will be able to appreciate that. It's an absolute no brainer just from a cost standpoint yep. because of what's included or what's available to them with that. Yep. And I, Brenda, I loved it. it was several, several weeks ago, maybe one of the first two or three of these calls that you did when you said, treat it like a membership, like a gym membership. It's always there and available. Whether you use it to its maximum benefit is up to you. Yep. Wow. And I think uh, that's the key, Josh. We we got the uh, the company early on to stop saying subscription <clears throat> and start calling this a membership. Membership. What's the difference between a subscription and a membership? A subscription is transactional. Memberships are relational. And so having the platform that we have, you obviously want a relational uh, platform and a membership gives you that. So uh, that's why they started calling them memberships and not subscriptions. But again, you know, you do get the benefit of the, of the uh, membership based on what you put into it. I mean, you can have a gym membership, but if you never darken their door, <laughs> it's not going to do you any good. 
Same thing with a Costco membership or a Sam's Club membership. You really get out of it what you put into it. Yeah, I think I think of a subscription as, like Mike said, transactional membership has, I don't think of a subscription as having benefits. I think of a membership as having benefits. And ownership. And, and ownership, and exactly. Ownership. And a subscription and, is cancelable. A membership, maybe you don't want to cancel it. So exactly. Um, <clears throat> exactly. I just, I just thought of something when we were talking last week about what, like the mailing list and not saying target. So I came up with, and I've used this and, and it, I, I like it, um, that I tell people you can curate your own custom mailing list and send a message to the people that need to hear what you have to say. I love um, it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I love what Bob put in the chat. Membership has its privileges. Yes. Oh. Like Amex. Yep. <laughs> Membership <laughs> has its privileges. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Love it. Yep. <laughs> I, I have to tell you just an antidote. When I first went, I went to the prior company and I was sending out birthday cards and someone said to me, how do your people, how does your family and people feel that they know you can just send that out on your computer that you know does that feel do they feel slighted and I said well it's a lot better than the card I didn't send them last year <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect it really is the thought that counts and I did have people early on that said, well, that's automated and people know it's automated and they, you know, they won't accept it. I've never had anybody tell me they're sending me a card in brownies back because they didn't accept it. Right. Or, <laughs> I mean, or that it's, yeah, it's, well, but it people, I, people want handwritten. I said, I've never had anybody say to me, well, I loved your card. It really touched my heart, but really no, because it wasn't handwritten. Like, yeah, it's silly. Yeah, you so yes. I to try to say to them is what you have to say. It's not how yep. it was written. I tell uh, them they should be grateful they are on my birthday list. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, we got a few minutes left before we wrap it up. Any other thoughts or have any of has anybody else um Lulu's talked about hers, but has anybody else seen a shift in their mindset? And when that happened, like Gail said, she wanted hiring clients and they just started appearing. Anybody else seen that transformation and want to share that so that others that might not have had that yet can hear another No, no worries. It's okay. Um, any challenges you're having right now that maybe we can spend the last few minutes addressing? Um, I think Tina was raising her hand. No, no, no. okay. <clears throat> no. Well, that's amazing. I like it when there aren't challenges. Just Canva. Uh, Just give us Canva. Canva. <laughs> oh, yeah, Canva. <laughs> so um, next week, actually, wait a minute. Let me look at my calendar and make sure before I commit to something that. Um, Don't do it next week. Yeah, it won't be next week. Oh, good. Um, I'm in I'm in Arizona next week on vacation. I don't want to I don't want to miss it. Yeah, it won't be next week um, because we have our grandbabies during the day and it'll butt right up. So we won't have time to kind of prepare ahead of time for that one. Um, but in the next couple of weeks, we will do a basic. We're not going to do an in-depth, but we'll do a basic Canva training, um, how to navigate around, um, how to set the size based on the dimensions that mm -hmm. mailbox power um, oh, requires wow. or suggests for the different products. And um, we'll go through that. I do want to take a few minutes because Andrea and I, Andrea had a question um, in this last week and 
she didn't realize that stick ups you could put text on. She thought it was only images and that you couldn't do text. So I am going to share my screen and we're going to give a little tutorial on stick ups. So if you go right here to product categories and you scroll down to prints and then you scroll down here and you're going to see stick ups and Andrea wanted to do these. So we're going to view details and design your own. And I'm just going to say test. And then when you get to the next screen, when the computer catches up to me, you're going to see you have all these choices and you're overwhelmed and you don't know what any of these mean. Well, any of these that say your photos, if you want to add text, do not use them. They will not allow you to do text. But if you come down here to portrait style, guess That's what? Polaroid. Or Polaroid, um, you get a text box. If I go back, go back anyways. If I come right here, same thing. But now what it is, is it's taking that big sheet and dividing it into four, even though there's 16 stickups. So you're going to have a puzzle, basically, four puzzles. Does that make sense? And if I go back and I do this one, you're going to see it's a puzzle. It's one image. And you're going to have all... It's going to divide it up into 16. It's going to break it up. It's going to be one big image, but it's going to be uh, 16 stickups. Does that make sense? I see head shaking. And then um, when you come down here, same idea. You just have to click on them because we had to go through them last week and see. This is a single one and there's no photo there and you can't see the lines. <clears throat> but this one, you're gonna see lines of four different lines. So again, one big stick up, you could put one big image or you could drag and put four, you know, you could drag four images into it. This one, is got one image, but 16, but watch this, delete. Now you can put whatever you want and you can see the, the dotted lines of where it divides up the stick ups. So go play, people get overwhelmed and I even got overwhelmed early on and Andrea and I this past week played with it because she was like, I can't add text to stick ups. And I'm like, I've always been able to add text to stick ups, what are you talking about? And it just, was the style that I was always choosing. So keep that in mind when you're building stick ups. If you want to put words on them, do not use one that says your photos. So if you wanted to, uh, let's say a handyman wanted to uh, have stick ups, wanted a bunch of stick ups that they could go into Canva and create their contact information, put their little, do whatever they're going to do, and then slap it on uh, the stickups. Then you could use your photos because it's already pre-designed. It's already got their phone number and everything on it. But right. if they wanted to, instead of doing it in Canva, build it in Mailbox Power, now you would want to use one that you can add text in. Do you but see you just I'm be saying? able to do text? You couldn't do the designing you can do photos. Sure, you can. It you don't have as many options as Canva, but right. yes, you we've got backgrounds. You can add logo. Images. You could do their logo yep. and yep. you could mm -hmm. do yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's yep. good. Pickups are great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've got a question. Something came up the other day about uh, stick-ups that I uh, I don't know the answer to it. You know, when you have a 16 
they come on the canvas, but they're die cut so that they mm -hmm. peel off right. individually. I think that's also true for the for the four. Yep. They come die cut for four. Yep. But if you use the layouts where they have the little bitty labels, are they also die cut for the little bitty labels in stick up? The 16? Yes. Oh, 16. No. They're smaller than 16. No, there isn't any that's smaller than 16. Well, they've, they've got layouts for it. Nope. They're sure. always 16. If you mm -hmm. count them, there's 16 boxes. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me share what, the screen again. Look like? Yep. Because I don't know the answer. So sort of ordering is... a sheet for myself. Yep. So this is 16 boxes. See? I don't see your screen. I'm sorry. You have to share. Oh. I thought I did. There we go. Do you see the 16? Yeah, but, but go over to layout. And go down That's to mosaic. 16. Yeah, it's 16. There's a lot more than 16. Oh, I gotcha. No, they are not die cut. They will be die cut to 16. So if you pick this layout, mm. you can see that it overlaps. I don't even know well, why you would use well, them. Then you've yeah. got a die cut that's going right through the middle of a picture. Yep. I Those layouts never... are for other other things like cards, postcards, yeah. letters, whatever, yeah. for other designs that you build in Mailbox Power. Yeah. And they may, in the future, have the ability to do die cut, you know, have the die cuts for more. But right now it's 16. So it's either one big one, four, or 16. Really? Yep. And if you want to see the lines, make sure you pick one that you see the lines so that when you're doing something mm. like this, th really for me, why you would choose this is it'd be a single stick up. So you wouldn't do, you would pick this, the, the big stick up, the 12 by 12. And then this would be photos of your kids and it would say 2023 or Disney trip or what I think of this type of a layout is a layout that has a whole bunch of pictures for a wedding or new baby oh. or a trip, something like that. And I would put it on a single stick up that would go on the wall. It wouldn't get divided up. Does that make sense, Bob? Well, it does, but it, okay. I'll you can always, up. you can always I'll cut take, it. I'll take that up the next time when I talk to somebody important. Yeah. <laughs> And the Absolutely. company, because that that's really pretty deceptive, I think, for for people who think about using these as labels. Yeah, they're they're well. It clearly says when they pick that it's either one, four, or sixteen. It's it the okay. layout can be deceptive, but before they pick a layout, it says one, four, or sixteen. So just keep that in mind. Um, I don't know if in the future, I mean, it'd be, it'd be worth putting it in the chat that there's layouts for it. Can we die cut for all the different layouts for a stick up? Um, if we're going to offer it, we better, better do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're, they're not saying that you're going to get that many stickers, if you read the description before you ever go into the project, it doesn't say they're going to get 32 or 64. It says they're going to get one, four, or um, 16. Okay. So, but great. Um, I have seen that before, um, and I just... Haven't clicked on it because I'm never using one of those layouts when I do stick up. So thanks for bringing that up and definitely bring it up in chat, Bob. Yep, I will. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, with that, we are almost at the top of the hour. I just wanted to say thank you again for um, showing up on Tuesday night, showing up for your business and learning how to grow your business. And um, we look forward to seeing you all every week. Um, do us a favor and reach out to somebody that could benefit from this call and invite them to next week. We have figured out how to 
invite everybody at least that's friends of ours in that group when we do it as an event and we'll try to remember to keep doing that um but if you reach out and say hey i'd love to have you join maybe one of your affiliates have you join us we can grow this call and we all can learn from more people so with that we hope you have an awesome week and we look forward to hearing some success stories next Tuesday night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.